Hello everyone and thank you for watching VA TV. My name is Khan Mendelowitz and I'm your host today. VA TV is the voice of Vietnamese American in the greater Boston area. It is sponsored by VIT8, the Vietnamese American Insh Initiative for Development, which is a non-profit organization. The first half of our one-hour weekly program is in Vietnamese and the second half is in English. You can watch us live every Wednesday evening from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Channel 9 if you have Comcast and Channel 15 if you have RCN. You can also go on to bntv.org to watch us live and if you happen to miss our live television program, it will rebroadcast on Sunday at 5 p.m., Monday at 1 p.m. and Tuesday at 11 a.m. You can also call in 617-708-3290 if you have any question and we are happy to answer you. To watch any of our TV shows, please go on to our home website at videt.org. For today's program, we, are very, we have a very interesting guest, Mr. Thomas Progan. Good evening, Mr. Thomas. Good evening, Khan. Thank you very much for inviting me to the show. Yeah, could you please introduce yourself to our audience? Well, certainly. Uh, my name is Tom Brogan, and I'm a graduate of Boston College, and I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. And I've been in the Boston area now, um, back in Boston since uh, November, and I teach uh, English classes at the Via Aid. Well, keeps me pretty yeah. happy and uh, <laughs> very involved. That's nice. Yeah. So when did you first become involved with the Vietnamese orphan? Well, I was drafted uh, in the U.S. Army in 1970. And um, 1971, I went to Vietnam and uh, was stationed in Chu Lai. And uh, part of my, my responsibility uh, was to, well, I took care of the chaplain was my job. I was a chaplain's assistant which uh, meant that I was his bodyguard, uh, his uh, secretary, and his driver and friend. And um, he often and the other chaplain went out into the field, and that left uh, myself and another chaplain's assistant back at the base in Chulai. And uh, we had access to a truck. And uh, three to five times a week, we went out to the orphanage. Um, he asked me one day, do I want to go out to an orphanage? And I thought, well, if I'd get off the base, it seems like a good idea. <laughs> and I, I expected to see um, the Vietnamese children yeah. whose parents were harmed somehow in the war. And uh, when I got there, what I found out were many, many of the children were fathered by American soldiers, uh, Vietnamese mothers. And uh, that put them on a very low social scale in Vietnam at the time. And many, many of the children are just left at the gate. And uh, the orphanage took in everyone that came. And um, so they, they would wake up in the morning and find a baby at the gate. And wow, that's fascinating. Put the baby into the, into the, into the cribs. Yeah. And um, that's really how it began. And it was uh, heartbreaking at first, and um, then it became almost a matter of love, and certainly a, a, a better alternative uh, for a soldier to be able to go and work with children, rather than um, get into the conflict of the war. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I was just returned in 20, just April, I went back in April, yeah. to reconnect with the orphans. And uh, I met uh, a man who told me he was a Viet Cong, Oh. And um, I asked him where, and he said I was a Viet Cong in Chu Lai. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, oh, there's a question I've been wondering about for years, that we traveled back and forth to this orphanage on the same roads three to five times a week, sometimes two, two, three times a day, and we were never harmed. Mm -hmm. And he just looked at me and nodded and said, I know, with an understanding that what we were doing was important and, um, and that it was a a high That's probability the yeah. that those, many of the orphans were probably right. in the family of the right. Viet Cong also. Yes. Yeah. And um, so that was quite a meeting that we had. Yeah. Yeah. So you told me you come back in April, so mm. April this year? Yes, I went back uh, April for um, a five-week 
stay so to... So, April, this year is the first time you came back? Uh, no, I actually I went back in uh, 2013 for the first time. Oh. Um, I, I located the orphanage after a 40-some years uh, in 2008. I guess that was about 35 years or so. Um, after I left in 1971, my tour ended and I came home to the United States, uh, I wrote back and forth to the orphanage and we, she, the nun communicated back with yeah. me. And uh, that we communicated until about 1974 when the mail system yeah, fell and, apart. Yeah, Saigon and, falling apart in right. 1975. And then in 1975, uh, there was no contact. About mm -hmm. 1983, uh, um, North Vietnam or Vietnam established a consulate in New York City. Yeah. And uh, I called them to try to find information on Dan Coy Orphanage in Chulai, and they d wouldn't give me any information. You know, they were more curious as to why I wanted to know anything. Yeah. And so we can't tell you anything. So I didn't know what happened to them until 2008 when I was looking on the internet for them. For years I would look on the internet when that, that came available. And I would type in Van Coy, Chulai, Sister Helen, Sister Amelia, and all the people. Maybe maybe the name would come out, come up. But uh, one day, a friend of mine came to me with a picture of a of a set of swings, mm -hmm. and she said to me, "These swings and the garden behind it look a lot like your pictures." Yeah. And I thought they do. They did. Uh -huh. So I contacted through the person who took the picture. Uh, could this possibly be anything to do with Van Coy Orphanage in Chulai? And uh, he said, well, this orphanage is down near Saigon. And this is 300 miles away. So. But I'll write to the nun and I will ask her. And she responded to me to say, yes, it's the same orphanage. Wow. They had um, been... So that was kind of a reunion? That was a very that, emotional yeah, reunion, just, just, emotional. To, just to find it first in writing. And um, subsequently, I sent a CD of pictures over to her of the of the of the, of the 1971 pictures that I had. And she Can I see those pictures? Yes, as a matter of fact, I think we have some uh, available, and maybe we could start with uh, the first couple pictures. And um, and when they come up, um, the, she called the children to the orphanage. So uh, it's going to be the children at Van Gogh picture? Right, right. The, children, the pictures that we have are some pictures from 1971 that I took. Um, and part of my trip back this year was to give the pictures back to the children. Yeah. Uh, so right there we have a, a number of the children that are... This was just about when school got out in, in July, June, July, and they were all at the orphanage one day. and I. All sitting up on a wall, and I gathered them quickly together, and I took a, a good snapshot it's of them. Beautiful one, picture. One of my favorite yeah. pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Something precious about the Vietnamese, no matter how difficult the life was, they smile. Mm -hmm. S the smile in Vietnam is contagious. Mm -hmm. I found it then, and I found it on my return trips back to Vietnam. Yeah. yeah. We also see the little children at Van Coy. Yes, this is the little, these little ones. Uh, I would sit amongst them, and they would crawl on me, uh, mm -hmm. just crawl all over me. Be, be, they want skin touch. They want human yeah. contact. Exactly. Yes, they want to be touched and and touch. Uh -huh. it, you know, that that contact was very important for them. There weren't very many adults that to, to hold them yeah. and take care of them in that way. So, those were some of my favorite children right there, and uh, that you're looking at. And um, here, here we have uh, a food delivery mm -hmm. that uh, part of the job that we would do was raise money for the orphans on a payday. We'd yeah. sit outside and try to have the soldiers donate money, which many of them did, very generous. And, uh, and then we would go around to the mess halls and knock on the door and, oh, can you uh, give us some food to take out to an orphanage? And we were rarely, if ever, turned down. We would often leave that mess hall with truckloads of food. Really, um, yeah, American, I can see it American, on the picture. American yeah. canned goods, vegetables, um, powdered milk, all the, all the items that we had as soldiers, we gave to the children. And in my pictures, I can actually see the children become bigger. Bigger. Bigger, because stronger. Of, yeah. Because of um, the amount food of food we were bringing out to them. Milk. And milk. And <laughs> milk, yeah. 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 <laughs> items that were difficult to get on the market in yeah. Vietnam, uh, we were able to supply to the orphanage. Um, and this is one of my favorite pictures. I carry this picture in my wallet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I have, I'm actually showing the children pictures of themselves that I had taken. 
and that's what they're all centered around me, looking at the pictures of themselves. Which they, they didn't have cameras, so they didn't see that very often. Yeah. And, and uh, also, you met, were mentioned about some picture of the child. Look at her mom. Yeah, uh, well, this, this particular picture that's up now, this uh, the young girl dancing on the right, mm -hmm. uh, is, I went to this little celebration they had on a, on a Feast of the Holy Rosary, I believe it was, and um, this young girl is now an adult, and mm -hmm. she is the orphan that actually took me around in Saigon on my last trip, mm -hmm. and um, it put me in contact with some 30 of the orphans, of which I was able to give their pictures back to them. And uh, it was a very re rewarding experience to see them look at the pictures because they have no pictures of themselves as children yeah. other than the CD. So I think the next picture is, um, is my as an adult. Here she is now 40 years, 40 some years later. Um, big smile. Very beautiful and happy very woman. Very beautiful yeah. and happy woman. She runs a school, a preschool, yeah. 50 children. Mm -hmm. And um, she's um, very happy and very energetic and she and her husband and daughter and sons uh, took me all around Saigon, up to Da Nang, Tam Ki, Tin Phuc, um, Quinh Nhan, Quang Nai, and then back to Saigon for more for another so. So you go all the central area and then you come back to Saigon. I came back to Saigon and spent a little time in Vung Tau. Yeah. With the uh, next picture is, uh, is an orphan that I took a picture of and She's the first orphan that I met. I, mm -hmm. I was staying at a hotel in Vung Tau in 2013, and there was a knock on the door on a Saturday morning. A young woman, I am the daughter of one of the orphans from Van Khoi. My oh. mother has heard that you're here, and she wants to come and meet you. She was living in Da Nang at the time. She's flying down here to meet you. Please come and stay at our house until my mother comes, of which that, that started a wonderful friendly relationship with mm -hmm. the daughter and her husband and family. Mm -hmm. And um, Lai, that's his Lai, uh, came down and met me. And mm -hmm. we had a very tearful reunion. And uh, meeting one orphan was like, I didn't know what had happened to any of them. So meeting one that was alive um, gave me a feeling of incredible joy and almost as if I had met them all again at one time. Yeah. Um, so. Um, Lai and I became good friends and uh, many emails back and forth with Lai and Mai mm -hmm. uh, encouraged me to come back for 2015 to where they would put me in touch with many of the other orphans. So that's what happened in the next picture, I believe, is the gathering that we have. Um, oh, this is a beautiful picture. Uh, this, is, this, this picture made everything worthwhile for me. In this picture is Mai, closest to the camera. Uh, Wa, who is uh, one of the v uh, Van Khoi orphans, Wa's daughter and Wa's granddaughter. And knowing that the, the daughter is looking at the picture of her mother, that she had never seen her mother at that stage of her life. Oh, this is the picture you told me about. Yes, that. and knowing that one day the granddaughter will also look at the picture of her grandmother made my entire trip completely worthwhile. And that was only the fifth day of a five-week trip. Mm -hmm. uh, so every, every wonderful thing that happened to me afterwards was just a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, so, so how many times you visit Vietnam since 2008? Uh, well, in 2008 I found the orphanage. In uh -huh. 2010, um, I met one, uh, the nun that ran the orphanage came to the United States. Her family lives in Missouri. Uh -huh. And when I heard she was coming to the States, I went out to Missouri and I met her. And um, that was 2010, and that's really where things started to begin about coming back to Vietnam and encouraging me to make a return back. I had, I had it's strange things happen to a veteran in their head. Uh, I had thought that if I ever went back to Vietnam, that the purpose of my life was over and that I would die. Uh huh. Um, but but you were able to make the trip again. And and, and I, what I found out was mm -hmm. no. Uh, it was not over, that the, yeah. uh, actually the purpose of my life just, just opened up another book. Star, yeah. And another, actually, actually another started chapter, again. Another yeah. book, right. yes. The next picture, I believe, is, uh, is a gathering that we had in, um, in Swan Lock, mm -hmm. where the new orphanage is. It's a Swan Tam Orphanage. 
I'm, I'm not sure if that picture um, made, it, made it here or not, but uh, there was a, a gathering of 25 to 30 of the orphans. Oh yes, that's it right there. Uh, 25 to 30 of the orphans with their now wives and husbands and their children and their uh -huh. grandchildren. Uh -huh. And um, we had a wonderful, uh -huh. wonderful time. And uh, again, at this one, at the end of this uh, wonderful day's party, um, the pictures came out and we gave all the pictures back, myself, Mai, and Lai gave all the pictures back to the orphans uh -huh. who identified themselves. That's me, that's me, <laughs> oh, that's my brother, that's my sister. Many of the, uh, there were 275 orphans, I so what I was told, in 1975 and uh -huh. they were um, removed, kicked out of the orphanage and they were on the road between Da Nang and Chulai for uh, quite a while and many of the children died or were lost in that period and so a hundred of them made it out and uh, a ship sent up by a Catholic priest uh, beached on Chulai Beach and picked them up and took the hundred um, children back to Saigon where the government allowed them to start a new orphanage and 50 of the children were allowed to go to the orphanage and the other 50 were uh, adopted into the local community. Yeah. So uh, what do you do for work now? Now? Yeah. <laughs> well, now I teach uh, ESOL classes at mm -hmm. the Viet Aid and um, I, I try to get into as many movies as I can in, in Boston. There's a big, a good, a good movie market here being, of, of, of productions being done in Boston and um, I'm a long-term actor from 1980, and um, I stepped back into that uh, last year and um, got myself into a couple of films last year uh -huh. and hope to continue that this year and, and on in the future. Yeah. So, so uh, when will you come back to visit Vietnam again? <sighs> Con, I hope as soon as I can. Uh, the, the last trip, even though it was five weeks, uh, certainly my purpose did not end as many, many doors opened up and, and there are many other people to, um, to see and to um, help. And so my goal is to go back as soon as possible. So hopefully, um, <laughs> I sold my car to get my ticket to go to Vietnam the last time. <laughs> so uh, I don't really have a car right now to sell, but uh, I'm working to uh, save the money to try to uh, go back to, again, hopefully October yeah. or um, certainly by April again next year for another a visit with the orphans. Right. Yeah. You're yeah. still working and you still oh, can make sure, your dream sure. come true. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm 60 some years old now and uh, I'm still alive. And still and so helps. <laughs> yeah. Help I figure teaching. I have to keep working to keep yeah, alive. <laughs> working and go to Vietnam right. and yeah. visit. Yeah. 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 Beautiful country and um, I would encourage all veterans if you ever do get the opportunity please go back. Uh, uh, the healing process is, is quite wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mr. Brogan, for be being with us tonight. Oh, Khan, thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a wonderful stay. Thanks. Yeah. Once again, we thank you, you for watching VA TV. Any questions, comments, or contribution, please call us at 617-822-3717 or email us at VATV at vietnet.org. Thanks also to the BNN crew. Have a great weekend and goodbye for now.